What is up, everybody? Josh Tap here again, and welcome back to the Lucky Titan. And today we're going to be talking about something really unique. And before I intro my guest, I want to kind of walk you through why we're talking about this because a lot of us as entrepreneurs, especially in the tech space, we like to to put on our LinkedIn bio 14 different titles, right? MBA, CPA, LPD, whatever you want to call it, right? So all these different initials, but the only one that really matters is the visionary, right? The chief visionary officer. And this is kind of a new topic that has entered the market and become kind of the, I would say a big topic of conversation because as an entrepreneur, when you only have a few people on your staff in the digital space, it's kind of weird to call yourself a CEO, right? Cause there's not really an executive staff. So I wanted to just kind of preface that today as I intro my guest here, we have Lisa Mitchell and this lady is all about helping people become visionary entrepreneurs. And if you have not heard her podcast yet, please go check it out. It's visionary entrepreneur. It's the visionary entrepreneur podcast. Correct, Lisa. I didn't get that wrong. Visionary founder podcast. <laughs> visionary founders. Yes. I just listened to it this morning and for some reason forgot it, but anyways, visionary founders podcast. It's a fantastic podcast and she's really helping get your mindsets and your actions in alignment with becoming a visionary founder. So Lisa, I'm so excited to have you here today. Say what's up to everybody and we'll hop in. Hey, nice to be here. So exciting to have you here. So you're coming at us from the UK, right? So it's pretty, pretty late there. You're, we're recording this. Yeah, yeah, just after 5 p.m. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time, time for dinner. So I'm keeping you from your dinner. We'll do our best to keep this brief, but punchy. So Lisa, I want to kind of kick this off because, you know, obviously we, we prefaced it by saying, let's talk about becoming a visionary founder, visionary entrepreneur. Um, I'm going to ask you the question that you kind of, mentioned earlier, which is what, what was that pivotal point where you realized that a, you could be a visionary founder, but B, you could help other visionary people or people become visionary founders. Yeah, it's a really good question. And I think what I, what I was explaining to you earlier was that, you know, I had a very traditional life up to my early thirties and a very traditional background. Both my parents worked for the government in the UK. So I didn't know any entrepreneurs. It wasn't even in my mind ever to start a business. Um, and then I was sent on a leadership program and I discovered this thing called coaching. Um, and I was lucky enough in my job, I had I, one of my jobs was to look after a contract with Jamie Oliver, a famous chef I think you guys have heard of. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I got introduced to his whole world and I sat in a lot of meetings with him and I saw how his mind worked. It was so intriguing to me to see this visionary in action, to see this creative being in action, if you like. And, and I just loved it. And I've always had that energetic connection with founders. Um, and so I ended up leaving, setting up my own business. And I think not consciously at the beginning, but because I'd had that Jamie Oliver experience, I just have ended up working with a lot of founders. And right. so I kind of have this niche experience of seeing these people at first hand and also kind of claiming that for myself, you know, and I heard you talk about this on one of your other episodes, actually, about how do you claim that space as a visionary founder yourself or whatever area you work in so that you can be a peer with these big guys, right? right. And, and really operate at that level. And that's been my journey for the last few years. Well, and, and, and Lisa, walk me through that kind of emotional moment where you realized entrepreneurship, right? Because, it, you know, we, we can explain it in, a, in 30 seconds, but that jump, and I've actually interviewed a few ladies recently who had great careers who ended up deciding to, to start a business when it was never even in their DNA. I mean, for me, I'm a fifth generation entrepreneur. It was just kind of ingrained in me. We weren't talked to about college. We were talked to about who are you going to serve? <laughs> How are you going to serve them through entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. Where for you, it was saying, hey, I, I want to be, you know, I, you, you did the corporate path. You did it well. Yeah. But then pivoting. I mean, what was that emotional journey for you? Because that's a scary jump. It really, it really is, yeah. And I always say that all the best decisions I've, I've made in my life have been totally illogical. <laughs> I tend to operate by gut feel and I just have a feeling about something and I tend to jump. That's my, you know, people have asked me along the way, like, how did you prep for that jump out of corporate life? And I was like, mm, yeah, I really didn't. I just kind of jumped. But I think I got to a point of thinking, well, I was in my mind thinking, I know I don't want to stay here and do this forever. I trained as a coach, so that was kind of my way out. 
And then I was actually offered redundancy in my job. They were changing all the structures and I was literally about to resign. And my boss said, don't resign. <laughs> <laughs> There's something coming. So I was like, okay. So I basically got offered the opportunity to leave with some money behind me. Right. And I kind of thought, do you know what? This is the moment, right? If I don't take it now, I may never leave. So, yeah. but I did a big leap. I left my job. I sold my, my house in London. I moved to the coast where I knew one person. So I literally was just like living by the seaside in England going, uh, kind of what's next. Now what? You know? <laughs> now what? Yeah. And actually, interestingly, I then, I realized I've been living on adrenaline for a long time. I was the original kind of work hard, play hard party girl, right? Yeah. And when I stopped that, I actually became ill for about a year. Um, and I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and I lived on my adrenaline for so long and been out of alignment with who I was for so long that I actually ended up being diagnosed with chronic fatigue. Um, and I, I'm a big believer in alternative health and ways of, you know, I just saw it as a healing journey, really. So I, I, I did heal through that. It took me, you know, probably about a year to get back onto full power. But I had an incredible kind of naturopath who helped me on that journey. And I did a lot of inner work. Um, and that was really the foundation to set up the new career. Wow. What a cool journey. You know, and, and it's interesting to me to see in your journey that you removed a lot of the risk. And, and, and that's what like, you know, it was risky. Like not, to, not to take away from your story with this, but this, this is what I always push people to do when they want to be an entrepreneur. Is like, there's no risk to entrepreneurship. You just have to do it right. Like yeah. with you waiting, maybe a couple more months allowed you to leave with enough cash to survive for a few months Yeah, to be able to start a business, right? Or in today's world, you start a business online, make enough money so that you can buy yourself out of your job in the part-time. There's so many ways to do it without sitting here, you know, being concerned that you're never going to eat. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think, you know, particularly if you've got family, you know, I've got a daughter now and, you know, I've, I've made various kind of pivots in my in my um in my business you know even from that point i've made some big jumps and different pivots along the way and i always say that you have to make decisions from the profound and the practical so i it comes from an inner urge i think big decisions always come from an inner urge because they never make sense right, right. no one, i know you mentioned on another podcast that you were becoming a dad right right and you know and you don't do that from a logical perspective right? no, never yeah <laughs> But, and you can also like get your brain to catch up practically and make it kind of okay so you can make the jump. But really right. it's an inner urge, I think, that makes us do these things. Yeah, and that, that drive, I guess, to, to create and to be a better person, become a better person. I, I love that you know, about your journey as well. Um, so, so when it comes to, to becoming a visionary founder, right? Because you mentioned your story of overcoming the the you know the mental mental health really i guess and physical health from from yeah. chronic fatigue being able to take that help fix yourself but also translate that over to business right yeah. there's there's kind of this big gap i feel like that people don't understand that most entrepreneurs actually struggle struggle with these same things right i yeah. i had never experienced depression ever in my life i'm a pretty happy hopeful kind of happy go lucky guy but when I first kind of got into my business and I had that first month where I couldn't pay the bills, yeah, I, I experienced true depression for the first time in my life. And I actually had to go get on a medication for it so that I could get over these issues, right? See accounts or see all these things, which I never thought I would do. Mm. But all of that has actually fed into my journey to becoming that visionary entrepreneur. So walk us through kind of your, your system of becoming a visionary entrepreneur. Yeah, I think that's so important. And I, I've realized you know, particularly in the last few years, I think that, that our personal journey is, is entwined with our professional journey. And I often say to my clients, you know, being an entrepreneur is the, is the best personal development journey ever because you have to evolve as your business evolves. And whatever you, however you are, and the, the kind of things you're facing will be magnified and mirrored to you in your business. It's such a fascinating thing. So I've gone, gone into businesses where people have like the money isn't flowing and then you discover the founder has an issue with money. I mean, it really right. is so, I've seen it so many times. And so I think it's sort of like part of our mission as entrepreneurs and coaches, we love to develop, right? And we love to evolve. So I think it's part of like having 
the integrity to be on your own personal journey at the same time as building your business. And I think you can do those things in tandem. Um, but I think you have to be really conscious as an entrepreneur if you want to create change, if you want to build something new and different and keep your system clean, if you like, then right. you, have to be, you have to be on that journey. You have to go through that. So, you know, I, I, I'm very open about the fact that I'm not, I'm not one of those coaches that's like, oh, look at me with my perfect life. You know, I'm never <laughs> like that. I'm evolving all the time. You know, I'm very open about the fact that I've gone through a divorce in the last two, three years yeah. and share the challenges of that. And, and, but how also that's evolved me and developed me as a human being. Having my daughter, again, biggest, probably actually the biggest other than the big an entrepreneur <laughs> development <laughs> you'll ever go on. And I learn from my daughter all the time and she learns from me. And interestingly, I never had the entrepreneurial model. I'm jealous of you that you grew up in that way. <laughs> um, but my daughter is like, has such an entrepreneurial mindset, you know, because she right. grows up with me. And so she'll quite often say to me, oh, mommy, I've had an idea about your business. And she's nine. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? And I used to be like humoring her, you know, oh, God, tell me. And then she told me, and I'd be like, that's actually a good idea. I might actually like, That's really that. good. Yeah. <laughs> From the mouth of babes, they say, right? <laughs> yeah, so she has all her business already mapped out that she's going to create when she's older, you know? That is amazing. So I, so I love that, and I'm very passionate about that. How do we instill this visionary entrepreneurial essence in the generations to come? Because they're the yeah. people that make the difference in the world, right? I 100% I agree. And I know we both are kind of on the same page with this, where I, we think the entrepreneurship is the the fix to every world problem. Everything that Every problem that exists, entrepreneurship can solve it. The government can't. There's yeah, no other ways right. that that can happen. It's it's literally through being a creator and being somebody yeah. who actively solves a problem. And I want to highlight a point of your story here because, like you said, you with I can't remember how you worded it, but you basically were talking about when with a client, you know, you don't you don't try to hide the fact that you had a divorce. You don't try to pretty up your life, right? What people don't realize is that people will hire you as a coach not just because of the results you've achieved, but they hire you because you're obsessed with the topic. Because yeah. they can't get obsessed about it. They don't have time or maybe they're not passionate about it. Yeah. I mean, for me, right? I actually, so have been doing my MBA in the evenings, something that I wanted to do my whole life, decided to finally take the leap, learn how to manage people. I am not very good at it. I think it's because I like being friends with my, my team too much. <laughs> that sometimes <laughs> even the crucial conversations can be difficult for me, right? Yeah. But I actually end up hiring a coach to help me with that because I was struggling so hard with it, but she yeah. is obsessed with it. Right. Yeah. And I can see that I mean, even if you know she has amazing results, but even if she had it, I would have hired her because I'm like, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think I, that's probably the biggest feedback that I get from the people I coach is I'm so passionate about them and my topic. Right. And I truly believe, as we're saying, that when you step into that visionary space, then you can change the world because the very essence of being a visionary is that you're bringing something new to the world. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's a classic, you know, when I worked with um, Natalie Massonet at Nessa Porte, and when she first started talking about, I, I assume you know that organization, right? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so um, when I first started working with them, she told me that when she said she was going to sell luxury fashion online, everyone was like, you can't do that. <laughs> Nobody will buy luxury fashion online. You know, they want that experience of walking in the store. And everybody you talk to, you know, we'll say, oh, no, that's not possible. When you first come up with your idea, people will be like, you know, you can't do that. You can't build a business just doing podcasting. I mean, how, how does that work, right? Right. So, so, but that's the beauty of it. That's what excites me. And I said to somebody recently, I think I'm more passionate about my business now, 15 years in, than I've ever been because I've evolved me and I'm working with these amazing individuals who literally want to change the world. And I'm like, I'm all in. Like, I guess I can have those guys. That's awesome. Well, and I'm, I'm sure you get this same fuel. I, this is why I love podcasting and also working with podcasters is because they're, so, they're such visionaries that yeah. it makes me elevate my stat, my, not my status, but my, my vision, my elevate my vision and my purpose. And it gives me life. I get excited, right? It's hard yeah. not to have this contagious um, happiness, even <laughs> being around people who are so excited about the future. And I think that's the new paradigm we're all kind of stepping into is this spirit of co-creation. Right. You know, I was talking to somebody earlier and we were having a conversation. I was actually wanting to do something with them and to find some new coaches for my business. And then in the course of the conversation, we were like, oh, hold on a minute. 
I'm doing this bit and you're doing that bit. And maybe there's a bit where we come together and we could actually like do a bigger collaboration here. And I was like, I love that because to me, we're all on a bigger mission to elevate the planet, right? And to right. take humanity to the next level. So to me, the more we can be in this energy and be excited and spark ideas off each other, that's where magic happens to me. And so I do have a bigger mission about bringing entrepreneurs together, visionary entrepreneurs together, because I love that. I think if we could bring people together with their different pieces of the jigsaw, it might speed things up even more. You know, we yeah. might take things to the next level. So that that's buzzing in my brain at the moment. I don't know how that happens, but <laughs> it's buzzing in my brain. <laughs> I love it. Well, and, and, and I want to ask you this question because this is a little bit of a, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and kind of see your your thought process when it comes to becoming that visionary um, founder, because it, there's kind of this weird moment or this weird like line between passion and career. And, yeah. and we see this a lot with entrepreneurs is that they'll start into a business, start seeing some success, hit a roadblock and be, well, I'm just not passionate about it. And so they quit. Yeah. Um, or, or they're in something that maybe is kind of weird to be quote unquote passionate about. And, the, and so they realign themselves to, to do something and then they fail at it when it's their passion, right? It's like, I, I kind of want to know what your thought process is when it comes to making that big idea, but also making money and being yeah. passionate. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah, I think it's so important that you can activate the vision, you know? And I think actually that's the difference between visionaries who are successful in the world and people that sit around with an idea, you know? Yeah. And I think we do need help to do that. We need those people around us, like you've got with your coach, you can go, yeah, okay, here's the here's the next piece, here's the next amplification for you, you know? So I, I say to my guys, you have to really connect to your vision at a big level. And I think the biggest visions are those that, that I'm passionate about, that I can get other people passionate about and make a difference in the world. And really connecting in there gives people that energy and passion to keep going. And also to be able to look at the roadblock. So is the roadblock, is the, is the block because you're not passionate about it? Or I think more often it's a fear. Oh my God, what if I do it and it really takes off? Then what do I do? Or what if I go after my passion and it doesn't work out? Then I've lost everything, right? right. That's the kind of stories we build up in our minds as entrepreneurs. Neither of those are true. The reality is that you have to try and fail and try and fail and launch stuff. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you've got to be on that journey of continual involvement. And if you can embrace that rather than it's an all or nothing, I succeed or fail, I live or die, is tend to where we go to and where the ego goes to to try and protect us. But I think that passion is where the juice is. It's Agreed. definitely worth exploring. And often where we stop ourselves is because we're either frightened of too much success or we're frightened that it's going to fail and we'll be left yeah. with nothing. You know? <laughs> well, it and that fear of failure, obviously, it holds everybody back. But I, I think what it comes down to, and I love that you touched on this, is that it really has to do with, with your approach, right? How are you coming at it? Because yeah. the reason I wanted to play devil's advocate with this is I watch, there's, there's kind of two schools of people, right? You have the, you have the um, like nonprofit people, right? I, I really have a passion around solving this problem. And then you have the for-profit people who are, they're a little bit maybe more money driven, right? And we'll pretend we're not for days, but I mean, scoreboard, right? That's what money is, is a scoreboard. <laughs> um, but there's kind of this weird, I guess, problem where people like start a nonprofit or have something they're so passionate about. But then there's these people who are for profit who are like scared to admit that making money is their passion, right? I don't know, that's just kind of the dichotomy I run into a lot with, with entrepreneurs. Yeah, and, and I think, why, why can't we do something we're passionate about that makes loads of money and right. is also good for the planet? I yeah. don't, you know, we've, we've kind of, again, we, I'm so interested in these, like, beliefs, and it's, it's kind of like a collective consciousness thing of, like, well, you can be good and do a not-for-profit, or you can be, you, you know, this person making money. Well, you know, we need money to create change on the planet. You know, right. that, that's how we do other stuff. I know lots of people who make a lot of money and also give back a lot of money or yeah. start off, start charities or start other things that they're passionate about. And I don't think there has to be a difference. So for me, making money is a good thing. I love luxury. I love money. I'm pleased my business is making money. And yeah. I believe it makes a difference in the world. And so I think, I think we bring that paradigm together, if you see what I mean, and create something new moving forward, which is money and joy and passion and make a difference on the planet all combined. 
And then I, I think agree. We I love that because that, that, I mean, I should have just ended the podcast right there. Great way to end it there. <laughs> there, there is a place where it all meets, right? There's, there's a great place where everything, everything fits together. So yeah. I hope for those of you listening to this show, you've been listening to this and saying, wow, Lisa knows all about being a visionary founder. I mean, she's really hit on some really amazing points when it comes to being visionary. And I hope you're asking yourself at this point, am I a visionary founder? Am I being visionary enough? Is my, my idea big enough? I would just give you all a reference for a book if you don't feel like it is. It's the uh, the magic of thinking big, right? Mm-hmm. Has a great great concept around this, um, you know, becoming visionary. But on top of that, go check out Lisa's podcast, the Visionary Founder Podcast. It's a fantastic show. I just listened to an episode of it, loved it. So make sure you go check that out and leave her a review. So Lisa, just to wrap this up with one beautiful bow, can you give us one final parting piece of guidance? My parting piece of guidance is that I believe really strongly, and I have lots of evidence to back this up, that we all have this visionary essence in us. We're just not necessarily taught to nurture that and grow that and live from that as children. But I honestly believe if you see children playing, you see them following their passions. And the more of us that do that, the more the world changes. Yes, I love that. Hand it off, hand it off to that next generation. That legacy is everything. So everybody, thank you so much for listening to the show today. And thank you, Lisa, for coming on. I just want to give a quick shout out for all those of you listening to this to make sure that if you liked this episode, go and like and subscribe to it, share it on social media. If you do that, I will personally leave you a review as well. I always do this for everybody who does it because who leaves us a review because I know that it's it's truly the way that we keep the legacy going, right? We keep that momentum. And also go leave Lisa's show, the Visionary Founder Podcast, a review as well give it a subscribe and dive into her content. So thanks again for coming on the show, Lisa. Thank you so much. I've loved this conversation.